All right, guys, we are officially recording. So let's get to the first question. Um, hey, Tosh, question. Can we send our trades with charts and thesis for a mod? Oh, absolutely, dude. Yes, I really want in. So guys, check this out. Tony, great freaking question, brother. So if you are an annual and lifetime member, guys, which obviously we don't have the monthly anymore, what you are going to be able to do, and I'll go back to this sheet here so you guys can see, all of our, most, most of our moderators, especially Aloha Trader, James, and Tom Diesel and Harry Haas are available for calls, guys. They'll literally take a call with you. Whether you're a long bias trader, short bias, if you need help establishing a process, you guys can not only, you know, hit our DMs anytime, guys. You can DM me, you can DM Aloha, whatever. Um, I just do so much backend work. It, it, you might get a little bit late from me um, because my focus these days is 100% on building the business in the back end, guys. Uh, but here's the thing. If you do need help, I'm here to coach, mentor as much as I can, as much time as I have for, which is a little bit less these days, well, a lot less, but, um, and I, and I don't have time for calls anymore, but if you guys do need a call, Aloha Trader, uh, James Freeland or Tom Diesel, guys, we're going to, we're get you, we'll get you on a call with someone who's going to help you in whatever you need. So Tony, hundred percent, bro, send them over, um, get on a call with the, with the moderators that do calls, dude, we, we do not leave you hanging at MIC, man, not at all. You are 100% um, uh, going to get the help you need, buddy. Yes, but you got to be proactive. You got to be proactive. You got to reach out to them. Don't be shy. Uh, Addy B, dude, how good was the last week's episode? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, here's the thing, Vic, uh, on YouTube. Bull flags and bear flags, man. It, this is the shit that the internet is just completely ruined in the, in the terms of traders. I hate these terms, bull flags and bear flags, bro, because it just compete. It confuses so many people. And then they're drawing shit like this, you know, hold on, let me show you an example. You know, I just hate this shit, man, because this is what traders are doing. They're taught to do. Um, they're taught to do shit like this, dude. They're drawing like flags like this, then doing lines and bro, I'm telling you right now, Trend and support and resistance is the only focus. When you start getting in bullish and bearish flags, you lose me. So it's not that like I can't talk about it, but I don't want to because it's nothing we teach at MIC. And it's so unbelievably unneeded with our process, like unbelievably unneeded. And it just confuses people. It's like there's all these squiggles on their charts and most people don't even know how to draw them. I barely know how to draw them because they're not important. Um, but definitely not something I'd pay attention to. Yes, warrants, of course. If um, So he asked, do you trade warrants? If a stock is has dilution, the more dilution they have and the more red flags and the, you know, the more overhead it has, yes, I'm going to be more interested. It's good to know about warrants. Um, bro, it's good to know about S3 effects. It's good to know about shelf restriction. Yes, Vic, those are very important things, but only obviously in small caps because you know, you're not you're not looking at those things for NVIDIA. You know what I mean? Like you're just not going to be looking at those things in big caps, but in small caps, it, the, the more, you know, the more tools that you'll 100% have at your disposal, buddy, a hundred percent. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Guys, any questions, line them up and we will talk uh, unless someone really wants to come on and talk about their journey, which I'd love to, I'd love to flush. I always love talking to members, man, or anybody who's willing to share what they're learning, what they, they can get better at, maybe even ask questions to me, whatever you think. Let me know if you guys want to come on or what are some topics that you guys want to cover today? Like one of the things that I think is so important right now is if we go back and I want to really make this clear, let's go back to the watch list. Guys, this is so important to pay attention to. I, I cannot stress this enough. The reason why we put a watch list every single day, and specifically Alex, like that's one of his, that's one of his major roles every morning is to keep you guys safe. It's 100% to keep you guys safe and to know what you're looking at. So the potential hot chick for today, this is not a short for me, the potential zombie target for longs after 1030. So number one, Number one, what he's talking about through, and I want to flush all these out, guys, so you can see the difference, and we can go through this together, especially for non-members to see exactly what they're getting into and what, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I, I want them to know what they would be getting at MIC. So check this out, guys. Uh, DCFC, not only, like I said earlier, day one, day two, buy open. This is not good. This is not good. 
Yesterday was the high. It's breaking the highs in pre-market. This is a terrible sign to be bearish and to be like, hey, this looks like a good short. By the time open comes, you know what me and Joe Kelly always talk about? It's hugging VWAP. It's hugging, it's hugging, it's hugging. In one direction, it's going to go. And because it's shown such strength, it's still over VWAP. This little consolidation area is very much a reason to not want to be short because there's really no confirmation yet. And there's really this kind of stagnant um, complacency. And then it just blasts off, man. And now, again, you know, like we talked about earlier, yes, this could arguably can be construed as a death candle, but it's a little late in the day. It's shown a lot of horsepower. I don't necessarily like the short on this, but I don't necessarily like the long because I feel like I'd be chasing long. Tomorrow is the safest trade, in my opinion. If it's really showing signs of breaking down, this will be a good short tomorrow. But you got to have the patience and you got to have the discipline to really fucking chill. You got to chill. Uh, okay, hold on. Let's go into the next one. So fun. So fun, guys. Ideally, a four push and a rejection to short. That's exactly what Alex wanted. It didn't get high enough. So if it doesn't get high enough, that's just something that you can't control. Again, we trade. We we trade when the trade comes to us. That's what we do. Um, CFBI. Easy to borrow. Shorts are trapped here. On something like this, I would rather wait for 17 to push and then reject than I will short it. Obviously, it didn't make it. So it's just another it's just another time where you don't force. And yes, you could cry about all this dead wood that drops. But again, guys, all you need is one or two really good trades a day. If they don't come to you or they don't hit your desired lines of what we call it MIC fantasy orders, you don't have to chase and then you're always safe. Because I would rather have you guys. I, I swear to God, I'm, I'm going to say this with a freaking passion. I would rather have you guys trade two or three times a week and be really confident in that trade. You have really good entries. You hit harder instead of trying to find a scalp every single day where you're kind of wishy-washy on the trade or didn't trade much. Does that make sense? Yeah, exactly. So again, it's a numbers game, but you want to have the house in your favor. Uh, let's see, IFBD. Just give you guys an example of what a watch list looks like every day. Remember, it's a slow market. When this is a hot market, four or five of these are the exact thing that Alex said because there's liquidity, there's a lot of movement, there's price action. It's a banger, man. It's a freaking banger. This market is a little bit slow and DCFC kind of showed, thank God, like, let's get some fucking life into this shit, man. I'm it's a little slow. Uh, let's see. Um, I, IFBD needs more meat on the bone until I can short. As simple as that, guys. It had no range. It's, it looks like an old tick pilot stock, you know, those ones that used to skip five cents. So it'd be like five cents on the bid and then a five cents discrepancy on the ass. It's just, this is not, where's the volume? Like, this is just not, you know what I mean? Uh, so again, MITQ, MITQ. Uh, this was decent. This was a better one. But again, there was not a crazy amount of meat on the bone. Exactly. Oh, see, I didn't even read that. Alex said that as well. Same as above needs more meat on the bone. So like when we say meat, what we're talking about, guys, is not a stock up in pre-market $1.20. And this is something you really need to pay attention to. $1.20 to $1.60. That's not a huge percentage up. It's not a lot of range. What are you going to milk out of this? Maybe 10 cents. We want the stocks like DCFC. And here's why. Uh, hold on. DCFC. Dude, you want range, guys. You want range. You're not fighting for 10 fucking cents. A stock in pre-market that's up 10 to the open up 13, 14. That's a really nice amount of range. So you know, if you capture a good long on a dip here, which is exactly what you probably should have done if you're a long trader, I am not a long trader in small caps. I am 100% a long trader in big caps and swings. I, I, I'm funny, you know, I keep it simple, right? I only short small caps when I trade small caps and I only long big caps because fundamentally, and, and let me make this very clear, fundamentally speaking, big caps are designed and destined to go up on a general scale. They're great companies with a lot of funding, a lot of cash on hand. I don't know if you guys know this, but fucking Apple, dude, has $200 billion cash on hand that they keep at all times. Did you? Dude. They have Elon Musk net worth sitting in reserves for when they need it. They're a $3 trillion company. The guy that bets against Apple is, I'm sorry to say, a dumbass. 
in the long run, you don't like, that's my average. So don't worry about the line, but I just long this recently. Again, man, everything dipped, scooped everything on that major spy crash. It was great on everything, fucking everything. But here's the thing. You guys have to understand that small caps are 100% inversely designed the opposite way. They're terrible shells of companies that are designed to go down. So when you see, like, look at this piece of shit, dude. This is the daily chart of DCFC. And this is a funny example because they're kind of new, guys. Like, if I were to go to, you know, one, oh, oh, oh I am on a one-year chart. Uh, actually, I was on a five-year chart. This is, this is, like, this is a new stock. This is like a new IPO, right? Like, dude, like bing, bong, bing, like Coinbase, for God's sakes. Who knows why Coinbase, right? Like, it's new. This is the whole chart. The, each candle is one day. Like, this is a new stock. So it's got to prove itself. Snow was another one, a recent IPO recently. I think, yeah, what was it? Um, yeah, dude, in 2020. This is just a two-year-old stock, right? But this is a huge company. I think even, I think Warren Buffett's behind this one, but, or at least backing it of some sort. But small caps guys are designed to go down. They're just shells of companies, endless dilution, things like that. And big caps are designed to go up. So I keep it simple. So then when we go back to what I was saying on something like DCFC, just because it's a turd does not mean there are not good longs out of this. But you cannot long it here at 10 or 12 and hold it for a year thinking it's going to go to 100 like NVIDIA operates. It's not designed that way, guys. It's not designed that way. There's a really good chance this gaps up tomorrow to like 27. It peters out. It never sees 27 again for two years and goes back to $3. There's a really good chance of that. I'm not saying that that's going to happen, but that's typically what these type of moves do and how small caps operate. And then, you know, Peloton, Alex just had this on radar because I, I don't even know what this line is. I don't own this bullshit stock. Um, but Peloton is, you know, a company that is just pretty much failing. They're literally, look at this. I mean, this, this is one of those examples, guys, where not every big cap is a really good hold and not all of them are designed to go up over time. And that's why you have to keep things general. So I'm so glad this came up. This is a company where when people were stuck in quarantine, who's heard of, Pe of Peloton, guys? I'm serious. Like, who's heard of this? Look at this daily chart. It was great. Everybody was at home cycling and doing, you know, or at least buying the bikes and pretending they'll, they'll you know, one day get on, <laughs> get their fat ass on a Peloton. I'm Because I'm like the number one guy that's like, hey, let me buy a Bowflex. And then I never use that shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, so the key is, and I'll get to your questions, guys. I'm just trying to rant here a little bit. This is a company that is not a guarantee. This was just the next wave. And another example is, uh, I, I don't know, there's a lot of examples like this, but once coronavirus kind of, you know, wasn't the talk of every single news article of everything in the world and the pandemic, you know, it lifted, you know, people are out and about at gyms again. You have to know that this whole entire business model is built on selling, you, a, what, what, not a motorbike, a, a exercise bike. So when people are going back to gyms and everything, they're going to suffer a catastrophic amount when reality sets in. So again, pick your battles if you're a swing term and you know swing term or a long term investor but just because it's a big cap does not mean it's foolproof just, and and this is where I want to go back with you know something like DCFC you don't know that this doesn't go and be the squeezer to 150 like Dries did or LMFA or so many examples over the years even though it's a turd you don't know and that's why you can keep things on a general consensus, but you have to know the macro and the micro. The macro is a general. The micro is, hey, I'll long this, but I need a stop loss. It's a sh I need a stop loss. Or you just got to know what to expect. Whew, winded. But so that's, guys, that's why every single day, and I'm telling you right now, when the market is hot, and what I mean by that is when there's a shit ton of liquidity Alex is accurate to the decimal point on four or five of these because the things actually move. It's just a little slow right now. So just, I know you guys are <laughs> pedaling a Peloton. <laughs> Hold on, guys. I think I missed some questions. Let me go back a little bit. Um, uh, YouTube, did I miss any? Tosh, could you talk about your trades and what you took today? I just managed swing term long positions today, buddy. I, I was traveling. Uh, my mom and my stepdad had to go to the Phoenix Open 
So I was not actually able, and I didn't want to, I just, it was too slow for me. And there was, this was literally the only one I was interested in, but then I was like, you know what, Alex is right. I don't want to short this. I was actually just doing big caps today while I was traveling on my TD Ameritrade mobile. So I have no small cap trades today. Um, going back, um, mods 100%. Yeah. I, I mean, here's the thing, guys, here's the thing. Mods hundred percent keep all of us safe. You know, even myself, like, dude, just because I've been trading nine years and just because Alex has, and just because Bao is trading for 20 does not mean we have an ego. In fact, we are like the only people on Twitter with zero ego. Dude, I learned from my mods. I Bao learns from us. Like everybody learns from each other. And that's the beautiful thing about the community guys is like, dude, you can think your shit don't stink. And then one day someone goes, dude, it stinks like high hell. Like there's always something to learn from somebody. And, um, and I just, I promise you, man, there's always something to learn. Dude, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Joe Kelly is one of our mods who I didn't know two, three years ago, right? Maybe arguably four. I'm trying to remember how long Joe's been with us, but I've been a trader nine years. I had, I didn't know Jack F all on options. I mean, I knew nothing, dude. I'm, I'm not kidding until a year and a half ago, I didn't know what options were. I knew them in hindsight, expiration dates, long-term puts and calls, blah, blah, blah. I watched my moderator, Joe Kelly's course, and I learned everything to the point of now I also options trade. That's the coolest shit ever, dude. I didn't know Joe two and a half years ago. If I had an ego and I was like, well, who's Joe? I've been trading nine years. Maybe he's only been trading three. Like, I don't, there's no ego, dude. There's no, e I didn't know options. So I learned options. I'm not a long trader on small caps. I can learn from Harry Haas or Aloha trader. They can learn from me. You can learn from Nancy. Nancy can learn from James Freelander. This is a community of people where they help each other. It's not an ego community, man. It's really not. I have a lot of time to rant today, guys, because Bow's out. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, man, better late than ever. What's up, Yuichi? What's up, buddy? What do you think about SEC proposal to move settlement period to T1. I'm just going to keep it simple, Travers. It's just games. They all do this shit like they're just trying to protect us, bro. They're trying to protect themselves. That's the only thing I'd say. Just in this industry, well, finance in general, guys, my God, crypto is probably 10,000 times more corrupt than stocks. And that is no bullshit. Um, especially from my buddies who are actually developers in crypto for the last 10 years. They're like, dude, you, you, you don't even know. Like, it, everything in the finance game is super corrupt, unfortunately, but the, but the fortunate part about that is we can take advantage of that um, in a lot of instances, but something like this, man, it's just to cover their asses and get them safer, in my opinion. It's, it's never, look, anything done to a day trader is never for the day trader. The tick pilot was not for day traders. Settlements are not for day traders. The PDT rule is not for day traders. It's to save big money and to get you guys so frustrated with all these different things that they don't want you interfering. That's what it is. That's what it is, man. They want the bots and algorithms to play all day so they can have a quantitative edge. They don't want us doing this shit, man. They don't. That's why they do all this crazy bullshit over the years. But here's the thing. Don't get scared of that. When people are like, hey, Tosh, you know, do you think small caps will die out one day? Um, do you think like we'll ever be able to trade or they'll just inhibit retail traders? Guys, they've been inhibiting us for as long as we could trade. Bow's been trading 20 years. They always change some shit up. And Bao's doing better than ever. All you got to do is stay up to date with the best odds and the best, you know, uh, strategies that which will guide you or, you know, whether markets change or not and teach you what, what, what's working. And outside of that, you're always going to be able to trade, guys. They're, you're always going to, they just, they just do some dumb shit. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, I believe more volume. Yeah, we need more volume, man. We really need more volume. Hi, Tosh. I'm considering the accelerator course. What is the major difference? Oh, great question, Fox. Really, really good question, buddy. So what's so what the accelerator course is, and I'll, and I'll go back to the website real quick for anybody wondering on this. This is such a good question. The video library, guys, has 10,000 videos in it. We literally have, I think, 1,200 videos. So you're more than welcome to go through every single one. It's just the accelerator course was designed 
because a lot of our members over the years was like, hey, Tosh, Bow and Alex, can you guys actually create something that is so linear that while you can learn it all in the video library, it's just going to cut your learning curve down by 95%, guys. I'm, we're not bullshit. I mean, it took our head moderator, Joe Kelly, six months to create the accelerator course, and, and he didn't half-ass it, dude. Like, we really made a good product out of that, um, and it took us a lot of time, and it cost a lot of money, um, and there's a nice production in it, but... Um, yeah, it's, it, I mean, it's a, it's a condensed version of the video library. So while it's not 100% needed, it's just going to save you a billion hours, man. It really is. And the reason why I recommend it is it's so linear that someone who's never traded or they're brand new to MIC, it's just going to give you the best first impression of what process is. So, you know, I mean, guys, we didn't make it to make money. We actually probably arguably lose money on it. Uh, but here's the thing. We did it because the members were like, we need something that's very linear. I hope that answered your question, buddy. Uh, yep. Pedaling a Peloton. No, thank you. No, no, no. Uh, DWAC and fun. We get some sympathy stuff. Yep. Yep. Well, this is what happens, guys. Oh, my God. I know. Crazy, right? This freaking DWAC stuff. Trump. Trump strikes again. Um, here's the thing, guys. Remember the time. And this is time-based trading. Look what time it is. Me and Bao talk about this every single week. The last hour of the trading day. Some call it power hour. I call it bullshit hour. <laughs> you should not be shorting. You, like, it, it, it's as simple as you need to know time-based trading in the first hour. So we'll go back to DWAC, or um, I'm sorry, DCFC. Let's go back to this. In the first hour of the day, guys, this is your edge. This is your number one edge as a retail trader before the bots, algorithms, and everybody who wants to screw you over comes into the market and has some really good say. This is the first hour. This is for shorting, 100%. Like you can find some longs, and I'm not talking about just this stock. I'm talking about all of them. This is the area. Remember, shading, shading the shaded area is pre-market. This is where retails have full control over their trade. Then... The last hour of the day, which we're at right here, right now, is not favorable to shorts, but the hour before that is. So we're talking when I start this webinar, 2 uh, to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, guys, this is the one other area or window pocket that you have that is good, <laughs> that's the best, that is for shorting. So these are the two times where shorts have an extreme edge. Keep it simple, man. This is how simple time-based trading and process can be. This is where your short edge is for trading. This is your long edge right here. Technically speaking, this is called zombie hour or just middle of the day. This is where longs have more of an edge. Right here is, again, another long edge, this last hour. It's not guaranteed that, you know, this is always going to be perfect shorts. This is always going to be perfect shorts. This is always going to be perfect longs. And this is always going to be perfect longs. But it's a very good edge in the sense that there's a better chance for one or the other, vice versa, depending on the time that you're trading. And process is that linear and that self-explanatory. And this is why when we have members or non-members always like, dude, I'm having consistency issues, et cetera, et cetera. Are you using the lines? Are you using the trend? Are you using time-based trading? One, two, and three. If you're not, no wonder you're struggling, bro. Come on. Come on, man. Time-based trading for, uh, for shorting and longing. Um, don't fight, not fighting trend. I, I, it, guys, it's that simple. It really can be that simple. And I think Vic figured that out. That's why he's a baller trader these days. Shit, I don't know if Vic got back to me. Hold on. Nah, Vic's out. He's doing stuff. So yeah, he's, he's busy. Any mods want to come on? Is any mods here? Kind of a slow day. I know everybody's basically out. Yuichi, you want to come on, man? You want to talk about your trades? Who wants to talk about their trades? I'm winded. You guys need to give me a freaking chance to breathe. <laughs> I need someone else talking, man. <laughs> I need someone else. I need someone else to let me breathe for a second. You guys have any questions? So all that we talked about today, do you have any more questions? Let's, let's flush shit out, man. Do you, do you, are you stumbling in anything? Um, is there something you want to talk about specifically on maybe big caps or small caps or like what's, what's hindering you right now or what's something you're interested in? Or maybe, or again, again, guys, a success story. I love hearing them. Seriously. I know people get super shy, man. I'm always like, hey, come on. They're like, no way, dude. <laughs> people are so much more shy than you think, man. I used to be like that in the beginning too, bro. 
I'm telling you, man, I, I, I probably would have never come onto a webinar if I was like brand new to MIC. Like I'd be shitting my pants. I'd be like, dude, what the fuck am I going to say? <laughs> what am I going to talk about? Uh, do you think DCFC is enough to bring some life back to small caps or would you want to see more moves like that? That's a tough call, Travers. It's, it's a really good question in the sense that, let me say it like this, bro. It's usually you need a much bigger squeezer to light up the market, but this, I'll say it like this. This does have the potential to be the spearhead stock. Like this might spearhead a total squeeze market again, bring back the liquidity, bring back the volume. It's tough though, because usually something to do that has a ginormous squeeze, not just something that we would see on a normal basis when the stock market is hot. This is not a big outlier. This is just something that's standing out right now. So I like the one that really does it, dude, is the one, yeah, like a DWAC, literally, literally. So you get something like a DWAC and then people are like, oh my God, this came back from the dead and then goes back up to a hundred. You know what I mean? And recently, like if we go to a 20 day chart, you know, this really made some big moves, but, but, but not DWAC. Cause I think people price that in and expected that from it. You've got to have something out of left field. This was technically not out of left field, but it had the movement that we're looking for. So if DCFC did like a move to 45 today, Yes, that would probably guaranteed light up this market. This kind of just looks like an everyday mover when the market's hot. And that's something that's a little bit like, fuck. I wish it had more of a DWAC feel. But again, people kind of expected that at a DWAC. And it wasn't sudden, sudden, sudden. It's got to catch everybody off guard, like an alarm clock. The thing that wakes up the markets and brings a bunch of sympathy is like, hey, tomorrow and the next day and the next day and really lights up small caps is when something literally wakes up like an alarm clock and everybody goes, what the fuck just happened? Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that, man. Like when G when GME or AMC was going nuts. You know, I know these have been topic of conversations recently, but they're not out of left field, guys. Like you want something that's like, holy shit. You know what I mean? Um, you want this. You want like I'm trying to show an example, but probably not some great examples, but you just need some massive, massive squeezers that, and way bigger than even just that day on something that hasn't done anything for a while. So that's, yeah, yeah, no, no, definitely those examples, Dino, of last year when they were doing it. Yes. Michael uh, Ciervelis, what's up, dude? Um, head and shoulders, yeah, if like we, are you talking about DCFC? Or are you just talking about anything? Head and shoulders is not the worst pattern in the world. But the reason why I don't like bull flags and bear flags and head and shoulders is people complicate things so much, dude. They really do. All you got to know, dude, is like, again, trend. But like, look, it's, it's, just, it's just lower highs. It, 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 fuck sh head and shoulders bullshit. It's, guys, it's, it's lower highs. That's your tell. Lower high. Lower high, lower high. That's a bearish signal, right? And remember what I said earlier, I still don't love it for a short, but that was a serious death candle right there. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a serious rejection right there. That's big. Regardless if a stock is a hot stock or not, that's a big rejection. So while I would arguably more be more bearish than bullish, I still wouldn't take a trade on either of them because this was a random mover in a slow market. And those are the ones that traders usually get squeezed on or dumped on really bad. <laughs> yeah yeah seriously you know the market is hot when everybody becomes stock traders because everybody wants every look i don't care who you are man you could be the most peaceful guy on earth and still have a little bit of fomo and when you're in the finance game when you're in the crypto game when anything that revolves around money guys you're gonna have fomo your whole journey as a trader my whole journey as a trader is to not give in to fomo immediately like i'll just give you an example like like spy when I told you I longed, um, sorry, one sec. So SPY dropped pretty big recently. That's a big drop for SPY. Like that's actually really volatile. 480 to, you know, I longed 50,000 right here in, in SPY. So I bought on the dip, you know, I was waiting for this. If I had FOMO, which I almost did, I almost did it right here, but I said, you know what? I think we have more downside. Here's another example of FOMO. If I would have put 150,000 right here instead of 50, I, you know, hindsight's 2020. I almost wish I would have, but here's the thing. I thought that this was going to go under 400. I really did, man. Interest rates, the Fed, you know, not printing as much. There's so much to pay attention to in government right now. And the world is still a little chaotic. 
I honestly felt like we were going to hit 400s. But again, like if I had crazy FOMO, I would have, you know, just put too much here. And even that's a sign of FOMO with impatience. Your job as a trader is to always curb your FOMO. It's just key. It's just, that's the reality of it, man. That's the reality of it. I'm looking at Disney right now. I love Disney. I really love this company for the long. I have a very, very small starter right here, but I want this to report terrible earnings after hours so I can long the dip, so I can scoop. Because I believe in this for a long, like, here's the thing, guys. This is not a day trade whatsoever. I have some right here, but I, like, I want to hold this for 10 years. I'm going to pass this down to my kids. You know what I mean? So it's a very different way to look at it. Um, you know, and you can do that with anything, right? In a, in, in, in a long-term investment portfolio, if you know the risks or you know what you're doing, it's very different. But the point is, if I had FOMO, because I really like Disney, I feel like I don't have enough starter, I would double down or triple down right here thinking that they had good earnings. And what if they have terrible bad? I could just wait. Because if, if they have bad in earnings, if they have bad earnings today, I'm, I'm definitely, definitely adding on them long because I believe in the company. But that's a very different way to, that's not a day trade. Like you guys got to understand that type stuff. So there's many ways to decipher price action and what you're looking for. Make sense? <laughs> I bought because I, <laughs> I'm tripling down on freaking this shit because Boba Fett episode five and six was awesome. Dude, I, it, the minute episode six or the minute I saw episode five, dude, I was like that guy in Mandalorian season one. I was like, show me the baby. <laughs> like, show me the baby. <laughs> I want to see the baby. <laughs> oh, man. It's just fun, man. It's just fucking fun, dude. Michael, BTC pulled it out. Yeah, it did. You know, we could talk about crypto for a second if you guys want. Look, crypto is another asset class, right? I, uh, well, let's go to coinmarket.com. We'll, we'll, we'll do a little crypto talk. Um, coin cat, what is it? Coin cat market, market.com or something. I think coin cat. Ah, shit. It's going to take me to a porn site or something. Oh, coin market cap, coin market cap. I was like, what? Coin <laughs> takes me to Pornhub. Yeah. BTC rally big. I don't think that this rally is here to stay. I think it was fueled by extreme greed on the dip. Um, I think that they, we see a lot lower, but yeah, I mean, the dude, this had a huge rally. This really did. But again, I'm not a crypto expert. So you look, I ain't giving a webinar on crypto expert. I'm not a fucking crypto expert. There's guys out there that do crypto. I've been doing stocks for nine years. I've been, I have not been doing, uh, I have not been doing crypto for nine years. So you probably want to listen to those guys. But, um, you know, the thing that's so interesting, guys, is what we realized is crypto and stocks are actually very related, not only in price action, like Stan just said, um, cryptos use lines also, absolutely. Crypto, I mean, look, anything in the financial realm uh, uses lines because you guys have to understand on the fundamental principle of what a chart is. All this is, is a physical representation of this, the bid and the ask. There's nothing more to a chart than the emotions in a physical drawn out portrait of what traders are feeling. That's it. Dude, there's traders that literally don't even trade a chart and they just trade level two. This right here is the Mona Lisa of this. That's it. It's the NFT of this. So you guys have to realize that within that, I totally lost my train of thought. What was I saying? <laughs> oh, oh, lines. So anything based on numbers and all that and patterns and human emotion that's built into this, because this is a love letter to level two and the bid and the ask, and who's willing to buy at what price and who's willing to sell at what price, short calls, puts, vice versa, blah, blah, blah. The lines work because human emotions built in. That's the point. That's why lines work in crypto as well. Yes. MIC process is actually arguably applicable to every single market, US market, Australian market, Japanese market, because there's physical and human emotion in it. It's that simple, guys. It's so that simple. You're trying to like make this into rocket science and it just ain't, man. Uh, stocks are nice. Not, see, now this is a man who is not giving into all FOMO. 2,300 buys he waited for a few days ago. And now, dude, look at that. That is not FOMOing in because, guys, think about this. Again, you can see FOMO in any chart, right? Is there a way to, what's the, guys, what's the best way to pull up a Bitcoin chart? Just GBTC, I guess, right? Like, I guess, 
whatever. GBTC is basically Bitcoin in a stock chart form. You know, this is an index that follows the price. It's called Grayscale. Um, this is basically the Bitcoin chart right now, essentially, but just, you know, kind of homogenized for stocks. Um, how many people do you know mortgaged their house and bought here? And it's 67,000 or whatever it would be if you actually pull up the Bitcoin chart. It's, dude, that, that's what I'm talking about. People getting in here thinking it'll go to 100,000 or whatever. It's brutal, man. It's fucking brutal, dude. So, you know, we're at 44,000 right now. Um, but anybody who ate, you know, quote unquote, aped in or FOMO'd in, that's very dangerous shit, man. That's very dangerous. These are people who gave into FOMO and look at how much they're down. You have to, you have to understand this. They're, you dr draw it. They are down this much money. Like that's a shit ton of percentage, dude. So if not half, right? So uh, remove. Okay, going back. Let's uh, let's see. Hey, thanks, Yuichi. Uh, do you use stops for long term long term investments to keep breakdown lines? I usually do, but the one time I didn't on PayPal, I got fooked. Fooked, man. I just that cracks me up. Conor McGregor. Um, I was saying hold till ninety. Um, I, I, while I always cut. I have one account, Tony where I am willing to more so swing day trade with big caps, but I have an investment account where no, I never sell. I'll take them down to zero. I'll literally take the company down to fucking bankruptcy. But that's the stuff I want to pass on my kids. But here's the thing. Here's the difference that in that account though, I'm not longing and doing that with PayPal. I'm doing that with SPY. I'm doing that with VU. I'm doing that with QQQ. I'm doing that with QQQM. Like I have all of these, the, the green lines are my averages. I'm doing that with, you know, a, the best companies or the best indexes of all time. So, so when you do a company that's a little bit more speculative, like, like I actually have PayPal right now. That's my average. I have a little bit of PayPal right now. I haven't added just yet because I want sub a hundred. Um, but this is more of a, I would probably cut it at some point. Uh, me and Alex are holding PayPal right now for the long-term um, swing but I wouldn't hold this down to zero because I think something could replace PayPal one day. Spy is not going to fail. Spy is the US economy, dude. This will never fail. Warren Buffett said, if I die tomorrow, I'll throw all my money in the spy and never look again. That is the best investor of all time. Warren Buffett is not the richest man alive, but you know, like Elon Musk or arguably Satoshi Nakamoto who invented Bitcoin is, right? Or Putin in Russia. I don't know. Here's the thing though. Warren Buffett is the best investor of all time, though. He's not the richest, but he is the best investor. And he's saying, I'll throw everything I own, every penny into the spy for the rest of time. That should tell you fucking something. Not PayPal. Not Disney. Not NVIDIA. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. Like, you just have to think about things like that. What are the for sure bets? And then what are not? I actually FOMO'd in a QQQ a little bit on this one. Um, in one account, I got, I got like seven brokerage accounts, man. So, you know, you'll see lines for everything. <laughs> I can't even keep track of all my goddamn lines. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? Is that E-Trade? Is that t Trade? Is that Cobra? Like, I can't even remember half the time when it comes to swing long-term portfolios or retirement accounts. You got to diversify, man, uh, if you get some money. If you guys are, you know, obviously just have enough for a PET account, that's definitely something where you need to be more linear focused and not, you know, diversify like crazy, in my opinion. Again, none of this is financial advice. It's just more of a guide um, and personal experience. But if you, if guys, if you're sitting on a couple hundred grand, a couple million, it's actually good to put that to work. Like I don't have any money sitting in bank accounts. It's a fucking waste of time. It, like, dude, inflation will rock your money. I, I, dude, I get a check for five grand. I, I make a trade five grand, whatever. I immediately throw it in a spy QQQ, something that's going to work for me. I don't, like savings accounts. I don't fucking let inflation touch my money. Literally. I mean, I mean, yeah, you keep an emergency fund. Fuck it. I put 10 grand, maybe, maybe 20 in my bank. Everything goes in the markets, everything. And that's different assets too. So it could be an asset, you know, in real estate, if you're a real estate guy, it could be, you know, indexes, but just, I don't look money's fucking useless. If it's sitting Money is meant to be used. The whole term currency, I don't know if you guys know this, but currency is a play on the word current. Money when moving is useful in a current movement flow. If your money is stagnant in a bank or chilling in your fucking wallet, it is paper. It is useless, useless, useless. So I put every dollar I make to work, except sometimes you need 5K because you need to pay off a credit card or whatever. Yeah, wire some out. Like I can always liquidate a position to wire out. Sure. 
Yeah, Grant Cardone, dude. Fucking Grant Cardone talks all about that shit. It's a current, dude. I don't have one dollar extra that's sitting in a goddamn Chase account, dude. It, like fuck banks, dude. I'm not saying, and I'm not one of those crypto anarchy guys that are like, hey, let's tank the bank. No, you need regulation. You need banks. You can be a part of this whole new world movement of peer to peer, you know, everything based on crypto. That's fine. But you also do need something that is regulated and you do need banks to some degree. But I'm not going to let a bank house 250 grand of my money and then lend it out nine times and I make jack shit. I, I, again, I, like I, I, like I kind of wanted to rant on anything today, but the point is, man, is people don't even know that the most basic nature of financial literacy, and it, it's as simple as get your get your money working for you, bro. Because because what people don't get if they're not educated on at least a little bit about money, if your money's not working for you, it's actually working against you because inflation every single year is guaranteed a two to three percent minimum. We are told right now by Biden administration, all the fake news, and you know, Republicans too. It's it's just all fucking political fake shit. But we're told it's seven percent. Bro, it's 15% in some degrees and sectors right now. Do not listen to them lying that inflation's good or it's low. It is not low. It is insane right now. It is the most insane it's been in in decades of time. And what does that mean? Your purchasing power gets annihilated on money that isn't being put to use. It's as simple as that, bro. Uh, what you don't want return. <laughs> yeah, you actually knows what I'm talking about. It's like, dude, I, I'm, I'm not kidding you, man. You, this fake news bullshit, dude, you watch a Chase commercial and I am not exaggerating. They'll literally tell you, put $30,000 away for your newborn child. And by the time they retire, you know what they'll have? They'll have a Subway sandwich. If you put, dude, let me, let me explain something to you. If you put $100 away in an index fund like the QQQ or the SPY that has arguably over the last 100 years given 8 to 10% return, by the time your newborn child, $100 a month, by the time he's retired, he's a guaranteed multimillionaire. But if you listen to Chase or you listen to Bank of America or Wells Fargo, guess what? The kid will be working at Subway <laughs> when he retires. Like, dude, it's, it's that drastic, man. <laughs> oh, fuck. Our watch list is better return. Dude, our watch list has the returns, man. Let's see what DCFC is doing. DCFC, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, man, I'm winded, dude. How can people talk for two hours straight? I need bow. Banks make the money from no from nowhere you can go to borrow money from them they do not actually have it yeah because they lend it out everywhere the bank is not keeping your money in a vault guys they're lending it out nine times plus so that they can make money and pay you literally less than peanuts yeah inflation has got to be in my opinion 10 to 15 percent inflation is actually a tax in the middle of pork yep they lie to us telling us it's a good thing they want everyone to remain stu stupid sheep yep i mean dude this is why this is why literally every single person in, in um, the educational system. The reason why the education system, guys, hasn't changed in 100 years is, you know, it started as just daycare, right? Like it was actually not even really a learning situation. It just got all, you know, it evolved and homogenized and it became like kind of like almost like a like a labor camp for kids and, and just like phone it in. The educational system has not changed in 100 years. What does that tell you? Memorize, 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 execute, memorize, memorize, forget it. Now go get a job and go get in the real world and know how credit works, know how inflation works, know what returns look like, know what the stuff. No, they don't teach you anything like that. Why? Because you're designed to be an employee and you're designed to give your entire life to bad debt, something that builds other people's assets. And then they, they say they'll take care of you through Medicare and Social Security. Bullshit. Dude, by the way, Social Security has probably 15 more years of life before they run out of money. Read the power of zero. Taxes are only going to get way worse. So when, you know, fake news is like, hey, Trump doesn't pay taxes. Hey, Elon Musk doesn't pay taxes. Hey, Grant Cardone doesn't pay taxes. Hey, yeah, you know what, dipshit? Elizabeth Warren and all these people. Guys, the reason why they don't is because there's literally legal loopholes for these people. You get C-Corps, LLCs. You pay yourself through different assets. You do life insurance. You do real estate. There are ways to minimize and mitigate your taxes by a such an insane percentage that you can actually 
not pay taxes legally, but they'll clown you for that because they're they're people don't know this stuff, dude. People don't know this stuff. <laughs> well, you definitely don't pay taxes when you have no income. It's like I was actually just watching um, a Seinfeld yesterday, Edge Stock, that you said that. That's so funny. And Kramer was saying to Jerry, he was like, well, you know my feeling on taxes. I don't pay them. And he goes, well, it's easy when you have no income. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, it could be, man. I, you know, depression, recession, who knows? Um, I do the best that I can at just putting my money where, you know, I can, you know, in different assets, obviously not just indexes or things like that, but um, we just got to do the best we can. Right. And then, and then if a recession or another thing comes, you better have the skills, maybe something like trading guys that will give you the, the confidence to execute, to make money. Cause when the pandemic happened, you have to understand is so many people that, you know, had to go home and obviously cause things were shut down they bum rushed the stock market or crypto or other things because now they actually had to figure out how to make money. They didn't have a skill set that was, you know, on their own terms. And that's why skill sets are so important. It's like, hey, you can always be a trader or you can always be an investor or you can flip real estate, like whatever, you know, even when the worst happened, which was the pandemic and people are like, well, shit, what do I do now for the next three months? I got to learn a skill. And that's why work from home, things like Wix and Fiverr and, and Asana and all these stocks went crazy. Even like Peloton's another example of that. People were home. What are people going to do when they're home? They're going to learn something new and they're now going to have time to exercise. Of course, those stocks went up. Does it make sense? Yeah. Fun, fun, very fun topics today. I think we covered literally everything down to trading, big cap swing, everything, guys. This is what we have to offer. You know, this is the stuff that we teach at MIC. So if you guys are, you know, coming in thinking we just short small caps, you couldn't be more wrong. I was actually managing my long-term swings today and opening up a couple swings all day today on my TD Ameritrade mobile account while I was house sitting, for God's sakes. Like there's so many skill sets that you can learn, guys. There's so many different skill sets. Um, yeah, good site for crypto coin market cap. What is your opinion on investing in water? The Walton spot water rights in the Colorado. I am very bullish water, Mr. Infamous. I think that water is going to be a commodity that is something that we do wars over probably in the future. And the reason that people don't understand about water, which, you know, cause I can actually speak on this cause I know some of it. I was invested in water stocks. Um, um, here's the thing. The, the, there's a lot of water on earth and there's that argument of people are always like, well, there's endless water, blah, blah, blah. It's complete bullshit. Not, not only are we destroying water, like Stan said, the process of, um, God, I forgot the name of it. It's like desaltification or something, but to get the salt actually removed from like say Pacific ocean to then be able to drink is so, <laughs> wait, are you bullshitting me? Or is that actually real? <laughs> desalination? Yeah. Something like that. Um, it's so expensive that it's just not practical to do it on a mass, mass, mass scale. So believe it or not, like states like where I live, guys, I live in Arizona. Um, yeah, Trade Archer, what's up, buddy? Shout out to the homie, the neighbor. Um, dude could really be in danger in, in 10 or 15 years. And I mean, you know, global warming is always a hit or a miss topic. That's why I never bring it up. But you know, if that does truly become something and, you know, tornadoes are on the East Coast and, you know, dehydration is on the West Coast, like, you don't know, right? Like, these are things that I think could. So, again, it's not something that you rush into tomorrow, Mr. Infamous, but it's definitely something to keep on the radar, brother. Absolutely. And cool, man. Thank you for that. I, I was close, right? I think that's what I said. Something like that. Minerals, all these things, man. There's always. Yeah. Here's the, here's the thing, guys. When it comes to long-term investments, um, the thing that I always try to focus on, and I'm, look, I'm not a master there. You know, I just do the best that I can. The thing that I love about long-term investments are take a very, very objective view, not just the things that you like, but what are the things that people use? I'll give you two companies that I absolutely fucking worship for long-term investments. I'll give you two. This does not mean copy me, even though I have some. This does not mean go into them. But RSG is a waste disposal company, one of the biggest in the world. They have they do all of Arizona. It's called Republic Services. In fact, um, I actually live close to one of their corporate headquarters, the Big Red Star. RSG is a really, really good company, and they are about waste disposal. A tornado could wipe out half the world tomorrow and they would have business. It's about cleanup 
It's about waste. Everybody produces waste. It doesn't matter who you are. Starbucks is another one. I love Starbucks, dude. You know why? I actually just long some recently. I think this is my average um, in a new account. Um, I've definitely got some Starbucks uh, in a couple accounts on TD Ameritrade. Again, I use so many brokers that like I have like E-Trade and stuff, but in my TD Ameritrade, I have a little bit of, I have a little bit of Starbucks. Guys, Starbucks, everybody needs their coffee. Everybody needs their coffee and they're a dividend payer. So there's kind of like a double win. WCN, um, I love WCN. I, I own all the waste companies, all of them. But, but then again, I own 70 fucking companies. You know, I literally own like 60 long-term companies. So you could throw a dart and probably hit something I'm invested in. But the point is, is what is future proof? It's like, I don't know if General Motors is going to be here in 10 years. Probably not. I don't even know if Chevy will or Tesla. These are more speculative, but everybody needs coffee. Everybody produces waste. And then if you want to keep it general, you have something, of course, like the SPY, which is just the American economy as a whole. So we take the top 500 companies in the market, guys, and this is what this is. I mean, for the love of God, if you bet against this, you are literally betting against America. And not only that, for the spy to truly go down or bankrupt or whatever you want to call it, it's not really bankrupt, it's just go to zero. Every company in the U.S. would be down. And not just down, I mean, I mean they wouldn't be in business. So what, what, what are we, going back to trading wampum? What, what, what are we, outlaws? No. Welcome to the real world. Yep, we'll always have garbage and we'll always have coffee. And those are two of the most for sure bets ever. The reason why I love Amazon as well. Um, see, I gave you guys three stocks to at least just look at today and expand your mind for long-term investment. I'm not saying long these. I'm not saying long these. I'm just telling you, like I have some uh, Amazon. Amazon, like if we say it like this, Starbucks is coffee, Right. WCN is waste disposal. Um, sick. Awesome. Awesome. I'll look at my uh, swing portfolios. Man, my swing portfolios fluctuate so much in a day, man. You'd go bipolar if you're not used to it. Um, Amazon is about efficiency, guys. So while I like things like Target or Costco, and I have a little bit of shares in those as well, the point is, is Amazon is like the number one consumer retailer right now. So not only do you have the basic needs of coffee, you have the basic needs of waste disposal. Now you have the basic needs of everything in convenience and efficiency. What does that tell you? These are good companies. These are needed. These are future proof. At least the best odds for a future proof that you could do. Yep. I love WCN, man. I have them as well. Yep. Just look at that chart, man. That's a daily chart. That's a yearly, yearly, yearly chart. So, you know, that's just a little rant on that. I kind of wanted to break it up today because Val's not here. So we talk small cap trading. We talk long-term investing. We talk swing trading. We talk a little bit of crypto. Um, this is a fun webinar, guys. Is there anything else you want to uh, talk about today or feel like maybe you can get some insight on or, or, or wondering for that matter? Like, do you have any questions about MIC for God's sakes? <clears throat> hopefully, hopefully you guys like this one today. I know it's very different from our kind of clear cut um, but this market's slower, so we had extra time to talk about different things. Me and Joe used to do webinars like this years ago until uh, Joe had 10,000 kids and was focused on other things. But uh, then we got Val on. But these are fun. These are fun to kind of, you know, break the limits of another, of another area to talk about. Stan, yeah, great, great input today, man. You're totally right, dude, on all this stuff. Yeah, thanks, man. I, I think I think today was a really good discussion on a lot of stuff. And for anybody new, now you actually know, guys, like so many different ways to approach the market. But the thing that you should know is that everything you're going to want to find out is actually at MIC because the cool part about MIC, and I think this is the best part, is check this out, guys. It's not about me. It's not about Bow. It's not about Alex. We're just the creators. Look at all these wonderful mods and look at all these wonderful members. St Dude, Stan's not even a mod and look at how much he helped today. This is just a member. Like, this is what I'm saying, guys. This is a community where people care. Like, think about all the people you can network. Stan, Maui Guy, Dino, Travers, Yuichi. Like, these are people who have something to offer. Rob, you know, read that article. Don't get turned on by it. Just read it intellectually. But <laughs> the point is, guys, it's like, it's like when you have a community that's just kind of like a one-man show, if the guy doesn't show up or he doesn't want to talk about something or doesn't even know about something, that's a problem. You're limited to the resources of that one guy. The, the reason MIC was built in such diversity, skin color, talent levels, everything, dude. I, like, here, here's the coolest part about the diversity at MIC, dude, seriously. 
Look at it. I was like, I was telling Alex one day, I was like, dude, how cool is this? Not only are we diverse on everything, but look at the race of the three creators. How funny is this? Middle Eastern, Asian, and Caucasian. How perfect is that, dude? It's like, if this isn't the poster, um, like welcome mat for how diverse MIC is and what we offer, like how cool is that? Dude, we're all different races. Like, I love that. We could have been three white guys or three Middle Eastern. Like, you never know. Like, it's just funny how that turned out because MIC is for everybody that like, even, even down to our races, dude. I just love that shit, man. I think it's awesome. Oh, I'm winded. Guys, any last questions or I could wrap this up a little bit early because uh, I'm pretty fucking tired. <laughs> Edson, repping the Spanish community, my man. What, um, Edson, what, what ethnicity are you, buddy? I think you told me one time. I think you told, are you Spanish? Oh, Brazil, oh, Brazil, that's right, Brazilian. Yeah, yeah, um, dude, Fernando, um, one of our, um, our coder and one of our mods, Fernando's Brazilian. Um, and he, dude, the stories that, uh, I think he's married, so I'll keep it PG-13 so his wife doesn't kill him, but the stories he told me about Brazilian chicks, I got super interested, man. <laughs> I was like, I gotta go with Fernando of Brazil for like two months. <laughs> Cole, what's up, my main man? Dude, I haven't heard from you for a while, man. I hope everything's good. Elko. Hey guys, thanks for the questions on YouTube, man. You guys were really uh you, you were really hands-on today. If you do want to join MIC, um, just text my number. We'll get you started. I'll answer all your questions, whatever you need, 213-458. Uh, the 5997 number. Um, we can get you the accelerator course, guys. We can we can do, I'll even do a bundle package today if you want. Um, anybody that buys annual today, I'll do a special thing, man. I swear to God, man, I'll, I'll drop accelerator course like 75%, just so you guys can start off the right way because it's just such a complimentary, um, it, it's, they're very complimentary. You want to start with the accelerator and then you want to apply everything that you learn in the accelerator into the live commentary on what we do daily in chat or what we talk about in large caps or what we talk about in swing trade, just everything, man, everything. Um, so if you guys have any questions, I'll leave it with this. Definitely reach out to me. Uh, I do super, super fun webinar. Thanks for letting me rant for an hour and 42 minutes. <laughs> I'm sure you're sick of me. Um, guys, I'm gonna go drink this tea, calm my voice, and then uh, we'll see you next week, man. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for coming.